everyone. Welcome to our Telios suite. I'm very happy to have you here. So as you know, Telios is uh, the heavy mesh eyewear expert. And from this year, we are the official eyewear sponsor of the festival. Uh, we are very connected with the festival for its location. We have a manufacturer and uh, design center in uh, Longaron, which is just uh, miles away from here. And uh, we have a global reach as the Festival of Venice is a uh, fantastic global international event that uh, has been a big break to this, uh, to this uh, region. So I'm very happy now to have our guests, uh, Mr. Rivera and Mr. Ventro, that will talk to you about uh, the future of festivals. Thank you. Have a seat. Let's do some photo. <laughs> Have a seat yeah. and 22nd of photo, okay. guys. If you want, just grab your phone, yeah. perfect. And please put your cell phone on more on silent or turn it off. That would be highly appreciated. Thank you. Good. Thank you. Four. Almost six. Almost three. three. Two, one, let's do it! <laughs> oh, just about, I, I don't know, we just started like that. Huh? So the title of the panel is The Future of Festival, wow. <laughs> <laughs> it would be nice to see, to know how it will be the future of No, it, it's not an easy topic, of course, because the future is unpredictable. What is good for the future is that it is unpredictable. But try, uh, trying to understand what could be the future of festival, I think we should ask ourselves what could be the future of cinema, because we are here to serve the purpose of promoting good films and, uh, and add the, the audience, the critics, the journalists to um, understand what which are the trends of the, of the cinema industry, the cultural industry in the world. Uh, which is another difficult answer to give, because we are, as you know, as everybody we know, we are in the middle of a huge transformation of cinema, of the industry, of cinema, in generally of our societies. So we are facing a moment of great incertitude, uh, anxiety as well. If you talk to professionals in the field now, you will feel that the most spread uh, feeling and mood is the fear of the next future, because they don't know what will happen in the next few months, in the next few years. We don't know what will happen in the market, in the sense that the pandemic had um, a very strong consequence. Um, a, the transformation of the market was there before the pandemic, of course. The process of um, implementing the role of the platforms was there already. Netflix was already one of the biggest players in the, in the market, of course, together with others. But uh, during the pandemic, they took the main role because everybody was stuck at home. The theater were closed down, forced to close down. So they become even stronger than before, of course. Uh, so we don't know what will happen with the traditional way of uh, producing and mainly distributing films. Um, Theatres reopened all over the world, more or less, in the last few months, with mixed results, better in some places, worse in others, in Italy, for example. Uh, we know that some blockbusters, five, six, seven huge Hollywood movies, were distributed successfully everywhere, which means that the audience is still there if there is a good, appealing film good content, quality films are in terms of spect spectacularity, and, uh, audience or even more. Uh, the rest of the, of the offers 
was almost everywhere a disaster, especially for uh, the art house films. It seems that the audience is not there anymore. Uh, so the question is, will they come back? Uh, and the real reopen, which be the next fall, or not? Oh, they are so they, they get so used to watch films at home, which a uh, incredibly uh, huge amount of uh, uh, offer from the from the all the platform that in the meantime uh, took place, uh, open their, their activity on, uh, online. Or they will be back in theatre slowly, day, by, uh, day after day, month after month. Difficult to give an answer, of course. Um, personally, I'm quite optimistic in the sense that one of the reasons why the audience didn't get back theaters as usual as before is because the offer was not uh, the quality of the, of the offer was not so appealing uh, some of the most expected movies quality films uh, they remain uh, in stock waiting for a better moment to be released waiting for the return of the others in theaters but as we can understand, it's a, it's a problem. So if you don't offer good films, the, the audience will not come back. And if the audience is not there, the distributor doesn't want to re don't want to release the film. So it's a, it's a visual circle now. Um, but now there is a lot of good stuff out. The films produced during the two years of the pandemic are still on shelves, and the new ones that are very good. There is a huge amount of excellent movies in the festival court. They were in Cannes, there will be another festival in the fall. So, um, I think that the, the fall release will, in a way, will be a good opportunity uh, to offer better, better quality films and to convince the audience to, to come back to it will not. It, will, it won't be so simple, in the sense that what we realize in this last few years is that uh, exhibitors cannot think, cannot think anymore to do their work as they were used to do in the past. Everything has changed in our world, contemporary world. They need to think about a new model of releasing films completely new. They have renovate they need to renovate theaters first of all. Because if you want if you decide to get out from your comfortable apartment, your uh, sofa, uh, to pay a ticket, you want to find a wonderful place, comfortable, uh, state of art of uh, uh, of the swing rooms of the projection wood or the sound system, everything, and maybe something else, and maybe something else. Uh, there's, there are some experiences of uh, positive experience during these past months of theatres that succeeded to attract the interest of the audience. I, I know, for example, a, good, a, a, a situation in Milan, there is a multiplex called Cinemanteo, which they have something like 10, 10 or 12 uh, theaters 16. inside. 16? 16. 16, sorry. More than that. So 16 theaters inside the main, the same building. And they offer a lot of activities, not only films. They offer meeting with the filmmakers, with critics, uh, discussion, panel, everything. And the audience, and the audience is back to theaters, in that theater. So it means that you have to offer, every time you have to offer something else. You have to, transform, you have to tra try to transform a simple screening or, or a simple proposal of a movie in a theater in a special event. This is the reason, the main uh, way to attract uh, the people. Why the people 
Why there is so many people attending a festival? Huge amount of people. Young people as well. They are there to share an experience, a special event. The idea of being part of something unique, no? The possibility to meet the filmmaker, to show the talents, to get the autographs, why not? I mean, this is part of the history of cinema, no? It's the glamour, the talents, the, the star system. Uh, uh, we don't want to, no, to come down uh, such an important part of, this, uh, of these elements in the history, or the success films and the history of cinema. So, I mean, I don't want to, I'm not in position to give suggestion to, to the exhibitors, but we, we understand, we all have to understand that there is a different way to uh, release the film, to promote the film as well. Um, in the past, we were used to see huge uh, billboards of, uh, of films in the street of our cities. They didn't know more billboards anywhere, almost anywhere, because uh, there is, today there is other ways to, to promote films. And we have to think about the other ways to promote films. Of course, there are the socials and so on. And um, not all the exhibitors and distributors are getting used to use these tools, but they need to if they want to survive, of course. So, coming to a temporary conclusion. Uh, I'm pretty sure that the next future, I don't know if it is a matter of months or year, it's probably a mid-term uh, uh, solution. Uh, we are facing a, a situation where the two systems, the traditional one, the theaters, and the new one, the platforms, the online system, will coexist. Uh, theater will not disappear. I'm sure that we stay there. That we probably better than before. Maybe less than before, but better than before. Uh, offering major quality than before. And uh, there, I think there always will be an audience uh, eager to share the experience of watching a film, a film in a theater, which is the right way to see a film. The, the proper way to see a film. We, it's completely different to watch a movie at home, on a, even on, on a big screen. Now the screen is bigger and bigger, of course. Uh, but watching a, a film by yourself or with your family only, it's a completely different film, uh, experience than watching a movie with a big audience in wonderful theaters feeling the same emotion, uh, experiencing the breath of the emotion of the other people in the same room. It, it gives you, it give you something more and invaluable uh, to the experience of watching a movie. It's not do just something that you can get rid of. No, it is something which is part of the experience of watching. So I think that theater will stay, and of course, streamers are there to stay, and getting bigger and bigger, stronger and stronger. Now they are among the biggest players in the film market, both in terms of production of contents and distribution. What will be the role of the festival in this new situation that we are uh, facing? Sometimes I read articles saying that festival doesn't have a role anymore because the situation is so different and the streaming, uh, the streamers are able to promote their film by themselves, themselves using other tools than the traditional ones. And the opposite, I think, this is not true. Uh, I, and the opposite, I think that the role of the festival will become more and more important in this kind of situation. Uh, we know that most of the films produced by the streamers will be released 
only online, not all the films, not all the content will get it theatrical release. There will be a lot of films that will be theatrically released, but some of them will be released only online, directly online. They go directly online. One problem the streamers have to face is to find a way not only to promote their films, their tools, as we said before, social and so on, but to put in value the most important things that they are producing. They invest a huge amount of money in producing content. Most of the content is probably low quality or still, or, or, or in a way, not interesting from the point of view of the history of see what I say that. No. Um, but they produce also great movies, which are between among the most important films of, the, of this moment. If you think what Netflix produced in the last few years, Scorsese, David Fincher, uh, Jane Campion, uh, uh, and, Sorrentino and, and the four films that are here at the festival this year. No, so the, the, these are the most important films. Uh, they can attract the uh, interest and the attention of the audience. They can run for the Oscar. That they, there's a problem. No, that they win also Oscars. So uh, they have a small problem from this point of view, because they need to find the proper way to promote this kind of movie, which are very expensive. Uh, you know, uh, the, the Scorsese movies costed a huge amount of money, 150, 180 million US dollars. The Noah Baumbach film, it's a co very costly film, uh, that couldn't be financed by any major studios in Hollywood. Only Netflix has the power, uh, financial power, to support this kind of, of films. But they need a proper promotion for this kind of film, which are not, let's say, all these oriented movie for the general audience, easy to put online and to get you know, uh, immediately huge interest. They need to get fairly promoted. And I think the best way to, go, to promote this kind of film is to use the platforms, or the platform of the festival, the launching part of the festival. Because festival is a big point, I mean, Cannes, Berlin, Venice, Toronto, Telluride, whatever, the big appointment in the festival, in the calendar festival, of festivals, they are the most effective way to put in value a film, because they can get a huge, promotion from all the press and the media representative attending the festival, um, which helps a lot to attract the interest and, and the attention from the, from the general audience as well. So I'm pretty sure from this point of view that the role of the festival in the future will be stronger and stronger in place of losing their, let's say, power which was great in the, in the, in the past, in the last decades, of course. But in, in a way, I think it will be even more important in the next few years. What do you think? Uh, I'm completely agreeing with you. I will certainly uh, add some uh, examples, for example, of the necessity for, for example, for Netflix to show some movies uh, on big screens. In New York, there is a... Uh, at least one uh, cinema in the village uh, where they're showing uh, the last uh, uh, Netflix movies uh, in Geneva, where I was living during nine years. Uh, the Rex, uh, uh, I've seen uh, the Irishman, uh, the Rex, not on the small screen. So uh, the, the, the relationship, I think they understood that before we understood that uh, we need them. And, uh, and they were cl more clever than we were on that. Uh, I'm, I'm speaking as a next uh, uh, director of uh, festivals, but I was also an exhibitor. So, uh, uh, in Geneva, uh, and uh, uh, 
what I've got to say about uh, making the people, the audience, meet the people who made movies. Uh, I experienced it because that was the, politi the policy of, uh, of uh, my cinema, you know. We invited Walter Murch because he was in Europe, and Walter Murch was working with, with Francis Ford Coppola to speak about uh, Francis Ford Coppola's movies. And I think that's what the cinema uh, are made for. So now it's to make the, the people meet, but the festivals, it's higher, this uh, necessity is, is the main necessity, I think. You, you are here to meet uh, people and at every level to meet the audience, to see how it will work in, in front of an audience, but also for the professionals to meet other professionals and, and, and in, a, in a good uh, atmosphere. In a good, uh, and so I think that the, the future of the festival, to, to answer to the question, will be also uh, uh, the, the quality of uh, the event, the quality of the atmosphere, the quality of the meetings between uh, the artist and, and the audience, between the professionals, between you have many uh, stages in the festivals and, and, and all the stages have to be uh, successfully uh, managed. Uh, I think that Venice is uh, an example for that because uh, first, uh, when you arrive in Venice, first you have <laughs> something which the charm of the of the city. Uh, that's something you cannot find anywhere else in, in the world. And then I, I, I also uh, find that uh, uh, the quality of uh, what happens, the, the smiles of the people, is at the, the end of the, of the challenge. Uh, here in, in Venice, but all the festivals are, have to do that, you know, to be, a festival is a fest, uh, so uh, so uh, you have to be in a moment of celebration of cinema, in the celebration of cinema, okay, you have to work, that's sure, but you have also uh, to be at ease, to, to be uh, happy to, to see the people, and when you are happy uh, meeting people, you work better with them also, so uh, I think that's, one maybe a secondary uh, aspect of the festival, but I think that's one of the most important. To be happy to come back to the festival will make the people come back too, especially uh, professionals, but also the audience and, and everybody. To, and uh, that's the, 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 that's the same in, in, the, in, in the theaters. If you are welcome and, and if you can meet people uh, were interesting, uh, uh, you, could come, you will come back and, and see other movies. But uh, to take another uh, topic on, on but, uh, the same on the festival, uh, I will speak about my uh, experience in, uh, in Cannes, 27 years for, for the director's of night. I was struck by something that's not a uh, good good news. It's the the, the growing age of uh, the people of the audience. Uh, so uh, there was there is not a fine in the directors for London when I was there. Uh, the, the the average age of uh, of the people was growing from one year every year. So that was we were the same. We were coming. Uh, something very important is to appeal also the young audience. The young audience is the first to, which was uh, captured by, uh, by the platforms. I'm not against the, the platforms. I said uh, I think that uh, some of the best movies of the last year were, uh, were produced by the platforms and, uh, and I was on the, in the pla on the platforms also during the pandemics and I, uh, we, uh, I'm, I'm, that's something which was will not finish now, and uh, but I think that's something which is a little uh, worrying, is uh, that uh, movies now appeal more people uh, between uh, uh, 45 and 85 uh, than the younger uh, generation. So uh, that's something we have to, uh, to think about if we are uh, uh, thinking about cinema. I have another experience that's exactly the contrary of Cannes uh, when I was in Saudi Arabia. Uh, the audience was very young. 
and, and that was uh, and very feminine too. So that was uh, something very exciting to to work for them to know that the people who wanted to go to the cinemas were the the, the young part of uh, the audience, and they were uh, very proactive. Uh, and, and for a festival also. Something I, I, I did not succeed in doing, but uh, I know another festival in Saudi Arabia, uh, in Damam, uh, which is very successful in that. The, the, the reunion of all these young uh, wanted to be directors and producers and screenwriters. Damam, the Saudi film festival, that's not mine, but I was not working it, but I discovered it when I was in Saudi Arabia. It's a wonderful place to find the new talents of tomorrow. For the moment, they don't know how to make cinema. And that's something you can find only in a, in a festival. And if the old festival of the old countries of festival are able to uh, appeal the young talents and to make the young talents meet with the people who know a little more about uh, movie business and how to make movies, I think it would be also another uh, door for uh, a better future for, for festivals and cinema. Fest cinema for me first of all, has a lot of specification but it's a way to tell stories and you know uh, I think until the end of the, of the history of man uh, the man will uh, lead stories to be told today. So I'm, I'm, not, uh, I'm not very pessimistic about uh, the stories in image and sound. Maybe it will change. Uh, many things will change. For example, I discovered also during the pandemics uh, the way that some miniseries are uh, told stories. Uh, I remember Yuna Bomber, uh, Manhunt. Uh, for me, it's one of the, the chef of Netflix, I think that was Netflix, and, and it was eight, uh, uh, eight episodes, and uh, so maybe many things will change on this level, but that's sure that you need uh, first uh, to to be told the stories to be told, and second to meet the people who are first interested in movies, second who make movies, and the festivals are the best uh, place to. Well, Edward touched some very interesting topics. Uh, let me get back to, to a point. When we when you say streamers, we usually think Netflix, of course, it's normal because it's the biggest one. It's the one who started this process of transformation of the entire market. But there is a lot of streamers now. There is Amazon. We have a film produced by Amazon, which is playing to, today, Argentina, 1985, it's produced by Amazon. Uh, there is Apple. Uh, and all the studios, they're, they're now launching and, and running their own platforms. Uh, Warner Brothers Discovery, uh, Disney+, Plus, Paramount, uh, and many, many others, as you know. They, they have, at the moment, different policies, of course because they are not, uh, not unique in terms of um, organizing their, their, their activities on, online. Uh, Amazon and Apple, uh, Amazon for example is much more open to the possibility of releasing theatrically the films before putting the film on platforms. Most of the films produced by Amazon are uh, uh, really, uh, 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 are going to be released or they were released also in the, in the last few months. Um, I cannot talk on behalf of Netflix, of course, I don't want to talk on behalf of Netflix. But I know, or I'm pretty sure, that they are thinking about the possibility to release some films theatrically uh, before uh, putting them uh, on platforms. They did it already, yeah. as Edward told. Uh, mm. the, the release, uh, they release uh, Roma, they release, uh, they release uh, Scorsese, the, um, the Irishman by Scorsese in some country, they release Sorrentino uh, in some countries, 
They cannot do that in France because of the problems with the windows. They cannot wait. Before it was, it was 36 months, now it's 15 months. It's still huge time to wait and before being able to put, <coughs> to put a thing on, on, on sale. Uh, but they do that. They did it, and I think they are going to do more and, and more in the next future. Because of the, of the reason we mentioned, no? because they need a proper uh, promotion of the films. And they, they need a statue that the release of a film theatrically can give to a title, which is something different from any kind of other way of promoting a film. Uh, so we'll see. It will be very interesting to see what will happen in the next few months. But I know that Netflix is really considering this kind of possibility. The second, the second topic, the, the topic that uh, Edward uh, mentioned was the fact that was the problem of the age, ever age of the uh, film uh, uh, consumer consumers. Uh, well, this is this is one of the most interesting uh, points, of course, from many points of view. Uh, in the sense that the success of the of the blockbuster that we released in, like, in the last few months uh, depends on the fact that there were the young audience that went to see it, not the old one. All the young people went went to see the Tom Cruise films, uh, Spider Man, uh, and so on. They're not going to see any other kind of movies so far. But they are very good. This means that it's not true that the young people are not interested in cinema. They are when he offered them something that that attract their uh, their interest. Um, on the contrary, it's difficult to convince the oldest, the older generation to get back to theaters because they are still scared of the situation. They don't want to take any risk to get contagion in theater and so on. There is less reason to be afraid of that, of course, we know, but there is still a lot of concerns about that in the other generation. And for them, it's easier to get access to uh, art house films at home on flat floor because you can find almost, almost everything now. So, uh, one major problem for the producer today is to understand which kind of content we have to produce for this huge amount of young generation that need to be conquered no, by cinema and to get to, to get them back to theaters uh, and not only to watch films on uh, from the point of view of the festival, and not only the festival, we say the entire system of uh, distribution and uh, exhibition is, is the fact that we need to invest a huge amount of attention and, uh, and tools in, uh, how can I say, in uh, Anyway, to, to form the audience, no? uh, if you're not used to, we, when we are young, we, we, our parents took us to, uh, to, to watch movies in theatre when we were five, six, seven years old. We would get used to go to theatres. It was the most beautiful and, and normal and, you know, experience of our, of our life. No? It was easy for us to get used to that and to go to theaters. I went to see films when I was really very young, every every single weekend of the year, and then more than that, no, year after year. Now the young people, they, I mean, they are, the parents of the young generation, they don't bring them to theaters anymore because they stay at home. So there is no way to. Educate. Get the, to educate the young people to, to watch movies. 
so this is a responsibility that should be taken by festival from one side, the schools from the other side, all the cultural institutions, they, 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 they should realize that this is the only way to save the proper way to watch films in the future. Uh, we know that we invested some amount of money and actions in, uh, in uh, facilitating young people to come to the festival. Uh, and we succeeded in a way. It's still a small amount of people, of course. But in the last 10 years, when I came back in, to, to, to Venice in 2012, the, the, the percentage of the young people in the festival was really very limited. Now it's much, much bigger. It's 10 times more than 10 years ago. Uh, we, we opened the accreditation to the students of the university, for example find a way to offer them hospitality in the, in the student uh, houses, in, uh, in residences, in events and so on. So uh, there were maybe 100 or 200 uh, young students 10 years ago, now there are almost 2,000. So in 10 years we, uh, we reach an interesting amount of, of, and if you walk in the theaters, in the streets, during, during the, these days of the festival, you realize that uh, the, the young people are the majority of the, of the, of the audience who attending the festival. So it means that there is a huge uh, possibility to work on that, to build something for the future, you know, addressed to the young generation. But this commitment should be taken by, by everybody, not only the festival. We have a limited possibility to, to work on that. But it should be done by schools, it should be done uh, by university, it should be done by all the cultural institutions that they have a relationship with the, with the, with the uh, young generation. Because, I mean, this is, this is really the, the strongest uh, chance for the to get to assure that there will be an audience in theaters for the future as well, and not only platforms. Yeah, sure. So I just want to add something. I'm a film critic, but also I teach uh, documentary filmmaking at Stanford University. So, yes. so it's actually um, the generation of many, many kids are the future generation of film lovers and obviously their visual generation. So, so it's working with the teachers and giving a chance uh, that students trust the teachers so then, and then bring them in the theaters is something that's been done for so many, many years sure. in the region where I live. And so I think this will be the way to work with the teachers and create also some programs that they can be involved in the discussion and the panels and they, and also have a very special moment to talk with the filmmakers because they're future generation sure. they trust uh, the film festival to be involved and give them a chance to be a creative also um, as a film critic i try to to, to engage them in the in the film sure. criticism so they they can see the film from a different perspective sure. so and then one more question i think the, uh, bringing them, and I see in the in the, in the Manus Film Festival there are more and more documentaries. So actually, that part is they're very much interested in, in documentary filmmaking. So combination of arts, filmmaking, and creativity is, is the future. Absolutely, that's exactly what we do. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so they they are. Very interested in creative stories. Yeah. 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 You, you have to worry about something about that. Mm -hmm. That's a part of the society. And another part of the society is completely excluded. And that was the, the contrary 50 years ago. The cinema was popular. Now is uh, for the high uh, middle class and the highest class. And, and that's something you can find everywhere. And uh, for me, it's a real loss because I'm born uh, with the popular theaters in, in Paris, and now I see that the people have changed. They have changed in Paris too because the, the city has changed, and now it's a, a bobo uh, 
city, the, uh, but uh, the, the audience of the cinema has changed. And at that moment, uh, in the beginning of my uh, life of, uh, of cinephile, there was no problem. Uh, the, everybody was going to see the same movies. Now you have some movies for some people, for example, the people who are looking to documentaries, you know, I was specialist during 10 years of the documentaries in Liberation, and also a little bit the, the thing. People very clever, that's sure, but coming from a certain class, social class. And, and that's the problem also of the festivals. Uh, the festival have always been something for the elite, but also during years and years, for, for by the glamour, by other things like that. Uh, supporting completely because they, they give access to other people to dreams and that's something we, we have to, to, to think about it's to to uh, 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 permit to allow uh, the, the, the people to dream you know the, the, the trend now is to be realist uh, to be uh, to, uh, to bring the life the real life uh, on screen but if you are looking to the history of cinema, the best movies were also uh, things to make you great, uh, dream. Uh, I'm a big fan of uh, the musicals of uh, Hollywood and, and, of, uh, and of India. And you know, among my friends, uh, I was really the only one. I spent days and days uh, to see uh, three times the same Jane Kelly movie or the same Fred Astaire movie. I know them you know, by heart. Uh, uh, but now, <laughs> I'm an alien. Mm -hmm. Cyrano was actually a musical. <laughs> <laughs> I think there is a question there. Uh, I don't know. I'm sorry because I arrived late. Uh, I was in Bush Riders uh, projection. Oh, yeah. By the way, <laughs> beautiful. <laughs> I just want to... I <laughs> no, 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 but it's worth. So I, I really don't know if I'm out of subject. But okay. I'm a journalist uh, since last 30 years. Uh, and uh, I grew up, uh, grown up very much through festivals. They really taught me something. I, I, from university, it was a big step to be here and to learn, really, and to try to figure out how to report things to the audience. So I want to say that I spread a lot the feeling of festivals in my family, first of all, in the families close to mine, and also to all the people and colleagues who are dealing with other subjects, so journalists of other subjects. Why I'm saying that? Because I'm really, really worried that for us, something is changing too much in a certain direction. When I see Timothée Chalamet, who I love, and all this fashion attention, which I love, and I see all this Instagram crazy fever, which I totally understand, I would like to see also some space for us to keep going with our work. Our work is to also meet these people and talk with them about what they did, how they made it, and what does it mean in this moment of existence to make this movie. So I'm really um, shocked to see that more and more, also can, everybody's doing it's in the same situation. We are cut completely. No time, no space. They take a flight, they do the red carpet, and they disappear. I'm saying that because I think we are also part of festivals, and we really give our life to that. So I would like to know if you have some idea how to um, help us inviting these people who are showing their movies to help us to talk also about that. <laughs> Uh, I hope. I'm afraid. <laughs> it's a part of the story. No, this is extremely difficult. I know everything changed from this point of view. I used to go to to go to festival in the 70s when I was very young, and, and the situation was completely different. When when a film was invited to a festival, all the team, the filmmaker, the the, the, the actors, uh, the talents. They were in the street. They were, they were there, they stayed at the festival for the entire duration of the festival. And they were available, they, you could talk with them without any kind of problem. And they were at ease at the festival and available and ready and uh, pleased to talk to everybody, journalists, uh, uh, young people, students, whatever. 
now the situation is very different, and it don't change for the best, for, for, for the better. I'm afraid, in the sense that it's a crazy situation now. One of the reasons why they don't stay more than two days at the festival is because everybody is working like a crazy. Everybody is on a set. And it's extremely difficult to find just a couple of days to convince them to come from a, from a shooting to the festival to promote the film. It's a, we, this is one of the major problems we have every year. And to make the screening schedule of the film is a nightmare. It's the worst part of, of, of my job. Because, see, why? Because, because it's difficult to find the, 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 the only sh short window when a talent, a filmmaker, can come to the festival uh, to attend the screening of their, their own film mm -hmm. because they have to run to yeah. another set, yeah. to another shooting. This is a major problem. One is part of the problem. The second one is that the system is completely different. Uh, the, the production company and the press offices they, they have an obsession about the control yeah. on the way of relating with the, with the journalists, with the critics, with the media representatives and so on. Uh, they, they are absolutely scared of the fact that they are losing control on, on, the, on, on everything, on the interviews, on the photos, on the on the TV yeah. reports and so on. And they won't let a talent or a filmmaker to be open, to be... to take any interview without preparing that, without having that under control. It, it's a nightmare, it's bad, of course. I totally agree with you. It, it's a, it, this is not the proper way to... Uh, to do to do the promotion of film, but that's the way it is. And no there is no way to change it. Uh, the problem is that there is no way for us to change this kind of thing. I have the feeling that festivals has a lot of power, have a lot of power. You know why? Because if you invite uh, someone with a movie, they take such an exposure. Yeah, sure. And then but they run to the next exposure. But at least you give three hours, and we do something, as we always. No, no, it's okay. But the point is that we don't have any kind of power for this. We have to beg them to come. We have to beg them to stay as long as they can in the face. We have to beg. We have to beg them to make interviews. Sometimes they, they come and say, "We don't make any interviews." Yeah. And he said, "Why we don't make any? You are here to promote the film. Why not make any interviews? Because the, we don't want to talk of that. We don't want to be asked about." some polemics, we don't want to be asked about, about anything. <coughs> so this is an obsession. This is a real obsession. There's nothing that we can do from our point of view. So I don't, I don't have any suggestions. There, there, there is any. also something else. Uh, the uh, extraordinary. So I see the decline of the newspapers also. So they were not so... Uh, they were not so despising uh, 20 years ago because the power of the newspapers was, was uh, really more effective than it is now. And, and for them, you know, uh, now the, between the, what is on the social uh, network and what is on the newspapers, or on the radio or the TV, is quite the same. So uh, they don't find the priorities, maybe. And, uh, but I'm completely uh, agreeing with with Alberto, uh, uh, as directors, we, we have to beg them to, to come and to stay. Uh, because they can't come and uh, say hello and disappear. <laughs> <the beer. laughs> and and, and we are, even if you are uh, telling the truth, we are giving the an exposure, uh, incredible exposure to their movies, they, really they don't worry about that. They are, there are other ways of uh, being now, now, and uh, that's something uh, I'm, uh, I, I felt because I was uh, a journalist in the beginning of this century. So uh, that we, as journalists, we didn't have uh, uh, more and more the, the same uh, appeal for them that we had before. 
But I would like to, to add something, something else. Everything is not so... There is not only negative elements in this. Uh, for, I give you an example. Last night, the Timothy Chalamet couple was... Fire. <laughs> incredible, as usual. Fire. Last year was the same with you. Uh, Two years ago was the same with the, uh, Ridley Scott films and whatever. So, uh, he spent... He's, uh, Timothy is like that, you know. He's always very generous with the, with the audience, with the young people and so on. Um, so, he went... Right after the interviews with Rai and, and Canal Plus, he went to sign autographs, take selfies with the young people, and then it was very late. We were running late, 15 minutes late already, uh, to, compared to the schedule. And so we asked him to count with him. And I promised him that he, he, we, uh, we will bring him back to the audience right after the beginning of the show. And we did it. Eh? But, the young people staying there, that were there since the morning, the very early morning waiting for him, they went crazy because they thought that they couldn't get what they were for. So I tried to explain to them, uh, he will come back, don't worry, we need to start a project, he will come back, stay here, be calm, they were furious. <laughs> we tried to, to kick me. So. And the way, uh, uh, and, and there were a girl who told me, but I, I need to, to, to make a selfie or get an autograph from, from Timothy, and then I want to go to, uh, to see the movie. And they said, but the movie started now. But they bought the ticket. So I told her, if you want to see the film, you do have to go inside. You cannot stay outside the theater. No, How but, you go? No. <laughs> <laughs> but the problem is this, that she mm -hmm. wanted to have the experience of the red carpet and the autograph and the selfies and so on, and at the same time to have the possibility to see the film. And the pay, she paid the ticket very expensive because the ticket it was something around 50 euros, so it's not a cheap ticket. No, no, just this is a way. This is an example. The young generation they want both. They want to experience this. For me, it's, I mean, I, can you imagine? I, I didn't care. I was here when Harris Fork came with the with Spielberg film, and we were there. I, I don't even think to ask him an autograph. I don't have an autograph for Harris Fork. I don't care about that. But for the young people, they they spend a huge amount of money coming to Venice, staying here. Uh, Sleeping outside, most probably, I don't know, yeah. waiting for hours to, to get the spin of the red car, and then, but still, they want to see the movie. And it's not a single experience. A lot of those young kids, they want to see the film right after the, the red carpet. So, uh, I'm saying this because I think that <coughs> this transformation of the relation of relationship of the, of the audience toward the uh, the films and the film world and the, and, and the film glamour is different from the past. No, so yes, but that's a positive trend. Yeah, absolutely, it's because because absolutely positive. Absolutely, the, the, no, it's, it's a new way of. Uh, it's a new way of, of, of but it's, it's existing. Yeah, absolutely. Yes, yeah. So, of course, I mean we have different attitude with. Uh, well, we can do both. Yeah, we, we need to do, of course. <laughs> yeah, talk to sure. this. Uh, no, I, I realize in these years the publicists is clear. They took a lot of power. It's yeah. clear. Yeah. But nobody really stopped this tendency, and uh, we are completely. My, who can stop I don't that? want I mean, to say the word. Who, who can stop that? I mean, the, 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 the production company, the studios, they give the power to the press offices to, to, to work like that. No, it's so. us plus the big festivals. I think it's the only way. I'm afraid it's a lost war. <laughs> we are talking about the, the aging audience, but I think you have a very good example, yes. candidate also, but I think you do, it, you do a better job in, in uh, attracting young audience was uh, the immersive island 
It's oh, a pleasure yes. to meet you. It's amazing. You are the first who actually yes. included this as part of a festival to have a competition. And this attracts uh, a lot of young people. Sure. And uh, it's, um, it's promoting also the festival because, for example, yesterday I was uh, <clears throat> attending an event where you have Johannesburg was at the same time was having the event here mm -hmm. in, in the Lido and the in La Torito Vecchio. And at the same time, you could, there were three possibilities to attend with the VR, with the, with the glasses. And there are a lot of young people over there. Yes. So this is a fantastic... Uh, I'm not so young because I'm a big fan. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, there's a problem, of course, because I just, have, I just realized because uh, you need accreditation in order to be able to, to enter. Yeah, because you have yeah. to reserve. It. Yes. It, 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 the problem that we have is that you cannot have a huge audience at the same time. It's a single experience. Mm -hmm. So you need to reserve in advance. You need it's to very have. problematic. Not to it is, this it, year. No, I know. Yeah. Well, it was very problematic at the beginning. Now it seems that it works. It's working quite, quite well. So. But I know it's not easy. It's not, it's not, I mean, we were used to go to a theater and enter the theater easily and so on. Now it's different. We need, we need, unfortunately, we cannot back to the, to the old system. We need to improve the system. It would be nice to have possibilities to have late entrance, like Khan does it. It is. No, they no, told me no. not, it's not possible. Late entrance. But uh, on the VR? Uh, no, in general. No, in general you can. No, in general you can. You can since the, for most of the screen, there are always seats available until the very last moment. And you can reserve online even two minutes before the screening. And I know a lot of people who, who are doing that. Because since there are few, there are few sold out screenings, of course, the most attended one. For, for, for the 90% of the other screenings, then there are always seats available until the very last moment. But Maybe not yeah. too many, but a number of seats available. And you can book online the, the, the ticket the very last moment. And you can do that. My, my, i give you an example. My wife, this morning, she wanted to see a, a film. It was 8.15, the, the film was starting at 8.30, and she booked a seat at 8.15 this morning, so, uh, in, in the Salada Salad, sorry. It's an example, but yeah. it works, I assure you that it works. But it would be nice to have it like Khan, without reservation, you just go with the no, match. No, the problem is that you can do that, you cannot have a double way of um, allowing the people to enter the theater. So, uh, because it's a very complicated way to explain to foreigners, because we have a system in Italy, okay. which is the CIA, mm -hmm. which is the association of the uh, right owners of the, uh, which is a nightmare. Oh, okay. Which is a real diver. So we are forced, also for the journalists and the press and so on, to uh, to have a record of each single uh, screening that we uh, uh, that we that we have. So it's, uh, this is one of the major problems. Mm -hmm. yeah. so, sorry about that, but mm -hmm. <laughs> but that's really like, amazing. Okay, thank you. No, I know it's a it's a wonderful. It's and they have also events. So yeah, yeah, sure, sure, sure. This and so there cool. is a market for the event. Yes, the co-production. The co-production market yes. and so on. The so bridge. Yeah. yeah. We have time for one last question. Okay. <laughs> sure. I'm from Milan. Yes, <laughs> as you can notice, yeah. and uh, you spoke about that. Yeah. Um, there is a, a good way now, a, a good place for yes. cinema enthusiasts in Milan, and I think it's a good example. Sorry, my English now is improving. Uh, because in Milan, at the moment, there are a lot of theatres that collaborate with the local festival, international sure. festival, with the IAGIS uh, that uh, organize uh, um, reviews from festivals all over the world. And But there are still Little Culture Association, Little Cinema, I'm one of the founder of Il Cinevino. Ah, so. And it is a very warm and wonderful, successful, successful, and successful little place. cinema yeah. with 74 yeah. seats, but we organize uh, events for young people, old people, because sure. it's still our <laughs> uh, main, uh, main audiences. And, and this collaboration make Cinema enthusiasts grows. In Milan, it's quite normal to see movies in original languages, sure. like 
was impossible a yeah. few years yeah. ago. And I think festivals, if I may, <laughs> should uh, should help theaters in first because it is the front line of the of the of the audience and how to improve the numbers of moviegoers. And so, if I may try to do something, it's not an imperative. It's you know, let's try to do something to to organize moments of the festival outside the festival during the years. In, first of all, in that places that it could be easier, and then the, the people and the audiences improve, the, the interesting improves, and I think it could be a very, uh, you know, it's not a vice no, circle, no, I understand. it's a good no, no, vice circle. Absolutely, I understand. We do that you know, in a very limited way. No? We, we, uh, most of the films of Venice are uh, offered again uh, in the following weeks in Milan, in Rome, in Naples. Uh, we organize a tour in, the, in some capitals of the world with the Italian films of the festival to promote Italian cinema. We go to Moscow, we go to uh, Beijing, we go to, I mean, at least 10 or 12 uh, can different countries during the year. Uh, but it's difficult, I mean, for us it's difficult, uh, both from the point of view of the investment that are required to do that and the, and the organization, of course, but the main problem is the, is the, the, uh, the right owner of the, of the film. Uh, every time you have to ask the permission to show a film, or you, get to ask, you have to ask them to lend a copy of the film. And which is, is not so easy. Expensive. It, it's, it's, it's very expensive. It's not easy. Sometimes they refuse. Sometimes they don't want to because they are trying to sell the film in a country. That, uh, so they don't want they, to show the film before selling it. So it's a, a huge amount of problems. You can try sure, to of course. do something else. Sure, Maybe sure. not just the screening, just mm -hmm. a panel, yeah. uh, workshops, mm -hmm. um, even in the little places. Because the little places. Is so you are asking me to make a tour of your land? No, not, not just you. Maybe, <laughs> because it's just me. I mean, maybe, you know, Mauro <laughs> Gervasini oh, yeah, can trust sure, sure. to speak yeah, about sure. his, what does a uh, selectioner of sure. uh, wife festival yeah. well, make? We do, that, we do that every time that we are asked, almost every time. I get a lot of requests, of course. So. But yeah, we try to do that. We, are, we, give, we try to respond to this kind of uh, request and, uh, and proposal. Sure. Of course, I didn't want you to make a, uh, no, 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 something to, that you I don't know. To <laughs> when you are but I think the sure. little, as you were told, uh, sure. the, the little cultural association yes. the school could be. That's very important. Problem. No, it's very important to create a, no, a reserve uh, uh, cultural association to promote cinema, to so to get used to films and, and to be educated to the to, to cinema. To yeah, sure. And on that note, I would like to thank Alberto Barbera and Edward Weintraub uh, for, the, to, for their presence. Uh, we need to end the talk, unfortunately, right now. Because thank, you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.